Hello all, welcome to this new lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned how to use format specifiers with printf to print values of different data types on the screen as output. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to write a simple C program to add to integer values and print its result on the screen. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see on the screen, I've already written a simple C program to uh, add to integer values. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect this program line by line and explain what is happening in each and every line so that you understand every element of a C program very clearly. Okay, so let's get started. So the first line that starts with a forward slash star mark and ends with a star mark and a forward slash is called as a comment line. This is called as a comment line, right? So why do we use a comment line? Comment lines in C program is used for documentation purpose. It improves the readability of your code. It means if suppose you want to inform someone about the author of the code or what this code is all about or when was this code written or why this code was written and all such kind of documentation notes, right? If suppose you want to write all these kind of documentation notes, then the best part to put all these information is as part of these comment lines, right? So the good part of comment line is that comment lines are not compiled by your compiler. It means the compiler, the moment it sees this line, it ignores it because compiler knows that anything written as part of your comment line is for programmers to understand some information about this particular code. The compiler understands that comment lines will contain some documentation notes and it has nothing to do with the program execution, right? So. Again, comment lines are basically used for documentation purpose and uh, those lines, comment lines are not compiled by a compiler. Okay, now having said that, now we'll move on to the next line. The next line that is hash include stdio.h is called as your preprocessor directive. It is called as your preprocessor directive. It is called as your preprocessor directive, okay? So this line is used for adding the contents of the file stdio.h as part of this program, right? So stdio.h is called as a header file. In fact, any file that has a dot small h extension is considered as a header file, right? So now you might ask me, why should we add the contents of this stdio.h as part of this program, isn't it? So if you can see, we have used a standard function called as printf over here in this program, right? And the standard function prototype or the function declaration for printf is present as part of this stdio.h, right? So to make sure that this program contains the function declaration for printf, it is needed that we have to add this file or add the contents of this file as part of this program. And to add the contents of stdio.h as part of this program, we have to include this file. And the only way to include the contents of this file is by using this preprocessor directive called hash include stdio.h, right? So stdio.h is one of the header files. In C language, there are a lot of other header files which contains function prototypes for various different functions, right? So for now, we are not in need of any other standard header files. We only need stdio.h because our need for the hover is the function prototype for printf function because we have used only printf function in this program, isn't it? Now you might ask me, Subhash, what do you mean by this function prototype? So please don't worry. I'm going to discuss about function prototypes, function definitions and functions in more detail in a separate lesson. Okay, for now, just understand that our program currently needs a function prototype for printf function. And to bring that function prototype into our program, we are adding the contents of stdio.h by using this preprocessor directive, right? Now you might ask me, what will happen if suppose I don't include this line in my program, isn't it? Now, if suppose you don't include this line in our program, few compilers might issue a warning or few compilers will go ahead and actually give you a compile time error. It won't allow us to compile this program successfully, right? So to avoid such kind of warnings or errors, we will have to actually add this line called as preprocessor directive, okay? So having said that, let us move on to the next line, right? So this line is called as your main function. As discussed earlier, main function is the entry point into your C program, right? If the CPU has to start executing your C program, then it needs a starting point, isn't it? And this main function indicates the starting point or the entry point into your program, right? So your C program execution starts from main function. 
right? That is the reason every C program, okay, must definitely have this function called as main function, and it takes this form int main open the parenthesis close the parenthesis and open the brace and close the brace right so this open brace and close brace will indicate a block right so because this open brace and close brace is associated with main function we call it as a main function block right so this block is used for writing a set of uh, statements to accomplish certain tasks right as you can see in this program we have written certain set of statements over here okay we'll go ahead and see what it is for now you have to understand that main function will take this form of int main open the parenthesis close the parenthesis open the brace and close the brace right so it is uh, it should be kept in mind that okay there cannot be any c program without a main function so main function indicates the entry point into your c program okay now having said that let us see what is this first line right this first line is called as your declaration or specifically variable declaration okay it is called as your variable declaration right so what does this line do this line indicates the compiler to create three variables a b and sum right it creates three memory locations in in more specific it creates three memory locations okay called as a b and sum right so how much of memory has to be allocated will be told by this data type as we have learned in our earlier lessons that int is a data type okay and if we are uh, considering uh, a gcc compiler or any uh, 32 bit compiler then by default the size of an integer would be long integer that is nothing but 4 bytes so therefore in our program okay we will consider that we are running this program on a 32 bit compiler therefore the memory allocated for the variables a b and sum would be 4 bytes each right so let us assume that integer to be by default as long integer therefore the memory allocated for each of these variables a b and sum would be 4 bytes it means 4 bytes for the variable a 4 bytes for the variable b and 4 bytes for the variable sum right so this is called as your variable declaration which will basically allocate you know 4 bytes for each of the variable a b and sum it means we are creating three variables of data type integer okay and uh, yeah this is what this line says right now coming to the next two lines these two lines are called as assignment statements these two lines are called as your assignment statements assignment statements okay so what do you mean by assignment statements assignment statements are used to assign a value into a variable right as you can see i am assigning the value 5 into a and i am assigning the value of 6 into b right so the memory location referenced by a will contain a value of 5 and the memory location referenced by b will contain 6 okay or in simple words variable a has a value of 5 and variable b has a value of 6 right and this line is an expression where we are adding two uh, variables that is a and b okay so using the plus operator it is an arithmetic operator and i'm going to discuss about operators again in a separate uh, video lesson very clearly for now understand that plus is used for adding two integer values over here right so i add the values of a and b which is nothing but 5 and 6 and the resulting value would be stored in the variable sum right so 11 gets stored inside this sum right so now we have the variable a as 5 we have b as 6 and now the variable sum contains 11 so sum is the result of the addition of the variables a and b so having said that now coming to the last statement of this particular program which is printf right so as discussed in our previous lesson printf is a standard library function which is used to print certain characters on the screen right so now we have to print our output on the screen and it should be a very nice diagnostic message right so we know that printf will take as its first parameter a string it will take string as its first parameter okay so the moment it enters into your double quotes what happens is it starts printing each and every character that it sees until it encounters a closing double quote or it until it encounters a uh format specifier okay so let's see what happens so what happens here is that as soon as the control enters into this double quotes it sees yes so s gets printed on the screen then it sees u u gets printed on the screen then it sees m m gets printed on the screen then it sees space because space is also considered as a character in c language space gets printed on the screen then it has o o gets printed on the screen then it sees f f gets printed on the screen okay and then it sees again a space space gets printed on the screen and then it encounters a format specifier the moment it encounters a format specifier it immediately goes out of this double quotes it jumps to the other part of the double quotes fetches the first value 
it's nothing but a in our case which contains a value of 5 and that file will replace this format specifier over here so the output would be sum of in place of percentage d the value of 5 will get replaced so it is sum of 5 okay so this is an output this is output right sum of 5 and then again it continues printing all the characters until it encounters a closing double quotes right so we have and Okay, again, we encounter another format specifier, which is nothing but percentage D. Again, it jumps to the other part of double quotes, takes the value or fetches the value from this variable B. In our case, B is nothing but six. So six gets printed over here. And then it continues again, it says ease. Okay, again, it encounters the format specifier. Again, it goes to the other part of double quotes, fetches the value that is there in the variable sum. In our case, it contains 11. So 11 will replace this format specifier percentage D. And it says, sum of 5 and 6 is 11. So this is the output of our program, right? So I think pretty much now we understood how to write a simple C program to uh, add to integer values, okay? So uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to write a C program to uh, add to floating point numbers so that you'll know how to use other uh, format specifier with other, you know, with uh, float type of values. Okay. So hope you uh, enjoyed this lesson. Hope you learned something new in this lesson. Okay. So if you like this lesson, please don't forget to like this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my uh, updates on the upcoming series. Okay. So having said that, okay, meet you in the next, next lesson. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. Love you all so much.